Ah yes, the Netherlands. Look at that beautiful, serene Dutch landscape. However, this landscape has a secret. An alien is hiding in plain sight. So what am I looking for? Don't be impatient. Wait for me to find it first. Just a moment, okay? Go here. Oh, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Oh no you don't, oh no you don't, oh no you don't. Ooh, it's a big one, come here, uh, yeah, there you are, Ooh. yeah that's a big one. Ooh. Lifting these rocks is not easy. Let's get the dirt off him first. There you go. A Chinese mitten crab. The alien of the day is the Chinese mitten crab. Iriogersinensis. This crab is also known as the Shanghai hairy crab or just the mitten crab. And the common name refers to their hairy claws. Can you see the hairy patches on the pincers of this crab? That's what has given it its common name. In Dutch we like to call him the Wolhand crab, which translates to the woolly hand crab. This species mainly originates from China and Korea. However, this species was accidentally introduced to Europe. It was first recorded in the river Aller near the Weser river in Germany in 1912. And during the 1920s and 1930s, it spread rapidly throughout Northern Europe in the Western Baltic and North Sea estuaries. Its present estimated distribution ranges from Finland through Sweden, Russia, Poland, Germany, the Czech Republic, the Netherlands, Belgium, the UK and France. The southernmost Atlantic coast record is Portugal. The crab has also been reported from North America with reports from the Detroit River and the Great Lakes but without any recorded establishment. Evidence suggests that the population in the San Francisco Bay is steadily on the increase. 
There are also records of this species from the Mississippi River, but only one. They are opportunistic scavengers and omnivores that will feed on a wide variety of aquatic plants, earthworms, snails, clams, scallops, plankton, algae, and will also attack and kill small fish and vertebrates if they can overpower them. Eriogersinensis has an unusual life cycle, for it spends most of its life in fresh water. But it must return to the ocean to breed. Young crabs are born in the ocean, but move upstream into fresh waters to complete their life cycle. It takes the young crabs about 3 to 6 years to become sexually mature, and they spend this time um, in freshwater rivers, ponds, lakes, and basically near any freshwater waterways. The crabs have been recorded land inwards for up to 1400 kilometers from the ocean, that's a very long distance, suggesting that they can migrate very large distances. It starts off as a freshwater organism, but in late August, the crab's sexual instinct is awakened and they begin migrating downstream to the sea away from the feeding grounds. It is during this migration where the grubs, crabs reach puberty and develop their sex organs. Late fall is when the crabs begin to breed in brackish waters. The males arrive first and stay in the brackish waters all winter. The females arrive after the males arrive. The eggs are laid within 24 hours of mating. They are attached to the abdomen of the female crab after the eggs are attached, the females leave immediately, heading to the mouth of the river. The larvae hatch from the eggs during summer and they float and drift about the brackish waters. Because the journey to breed for crabs is so great, they only breed once during their lifetimes. The breeding age is normally towards the end of their lifespan. Since these crabs only breed once, they have a very sizable egg production count. After the crabs successfully reproduce, they have very little energy and begin to waste away. One female can lay up to a million, a million eggs. The different life stages of the mitten crab. First, the eggs require pure salt water to mature. Secondly, larvae hatch from the eggs in brackish waters. Thirdly, the larvae gradually move from brackish waters to fresh waters. Then, the final stage of the larva is the megalopa, which is about 3 to 4 millimeters in length. And fifth, the megalopa then finally develop into small mitten crabs when they reach the fresh waters. So, what is the effect of this crab on the Dutch environment, you ask? Well, I'm going to focus on the Netherlands for this episode because I want to tell you something about my country. Although this invasive species is not unique to the Netherlands. However, for every different country, this species will have a different impact. And today I'm going to tell you about the impact of this species on my country, which is the Netherlands. And here I have a scientific source from the Nederlandse Voedsel en Warenautoriteit, NVWA, which is the Dutch Food and uh, Health Authority. Effect op biodiversiteit slash ecosysteem. Chinese wolhandkrabben woelen de, woelen de bodem om, waardoor voedingsstoffen in het water terechtkomen en de helderheid vermindert, wat een negatieve invloed heeft op de waterkwaliteit. Ze eten alles wat ze te pakken kunnen krijgen, dus ook waterplanten en mossels. Als de krabben leven in verontweinigd water, hopen de schadelijke stoffen die, zich in, de bodem, uh, die in de bodem aanwezig zijn, die hopen zich op in hun lichaam. Waardoor de consumptie van deze krabben door vogels een negatieve invloed kan hebben op hun gezondheid. En de Chinese wolhandkrab kan een schimmelinfectie, oftewel de kreeftepest, overdragen op de inheemse rivierkreeft voor wie een infectie dodelijk is. Now in English. Effect on biodiversity slash the ecosystem. Chinese mitten crabs can toss and turn the soil on the bottom of lakes and rivers, which in turn reduces the clarity of the water releases extra nutrients into the water which has an overall negative effect on the water quality. They will eat everything they can get including aquatic plants and clams. The crab is also an efficient bioaccumulator. The crabs live in polluted waters. 
and the toxins bioaccumulate in their bodies, which can make the consumption of the crabs by wi wildlife, such as birds, have a negative impact on their health. The Chinese mitten crab is also a carrier of the crayfish plague, a disease that is deadly to native species of crayfish. De Chinese wolhandkrab graaft gangen in oevers waardoor deze kunnen verzwakken. Ook kunnen ze water inlaten van elektriciteitscentrales en andere industrieën verstoppen. Door de grote aantallen, raken, uh, door de grote aantallen krabben raken roosters, pijpen en kleppen verstopt. Tijdens de trek van de krabben naar de zee lopen de krabben over land en kunnen in tuinen, speelplaatsen en zelfs in huizen komen. Dit kan overlast opleveren. De Chinese wolhandkrab heeft ze zowel positieve als negatieve effecten op de visserij. Ze vernielen netten en fuiken, waaronder soms krabbenbestendige uh, duurdere materialen nodig zijn. Ze eten van de gevangen vis. Een andere kostenpost is een verhoogde handelingstijd, doordat de aangevreten vis en krab uitgesorteerd moet worden. Aan de andere kant is, een, is er een positief effect, omdat er een markt voor deze krabben is en ze worden gevangen en verkocht voor consumptie. De vangst voor consumptie is alleen mogelijk in wateren die niet vervuild zijn met dioxines en uh, polychlorbifenelen. Uh, hengelsporters ondervinden hinder van de wolhandkrab doordat ze van het aas eten en lijnen doorknippen. Dit gebeurt alleen s'nachts. This says, the Chinese mitten crab likes to dig holes and tunnels in the shores um, and riverbanks, which can weaken them. They can also clog the water inlets of power plants and other industries. Because of the high amount of crabs, vents, pipes and valves can get clogged. During the migration of the crabs to the ocean, the crabs migrate over land and can enter gardens, play yards and even houses. This can lead to nuisance. The Chinese mitten crab has both positive and negative effects on the fishing industry. They can destroy nets and traps and because of that more expensive crab, pro crab proof materials are required. They also eat a part of the fish captured by fishers. Another extra expense is the extra labor required to sort the fish that has been affected and half eaten by the crabs from the unaffected fish, and both sorting the crabs themselves from the fish, which costs extra money and labor. On the other hand, there is also a positive effect since there is a market for these crabs and they are being caught for consumption sometimes. The fishing for consumption of these animals is only possible in waters that have not been polluted with dioxins and polychlorinated biphenyl compounds. Hobbyist fishers also find the crabs a nuisance since they can eat the bait and cut the fishing lines at night. In China this crab is a delicacy, but one must be very careful with eating them. They thrive in polluted waters and absorb high levels of mercury and cadmium. It is not advised to eat these crabs if you are not confident about the water quality. To summarize, this crab negatively affects the environment, including all the wildlife that feeds on them. These crabs are strong bioaccumulators that can contain toxic compounds such as mercury, cadmium, dioxins and polychlorinated biphenyl compounds. The crabs can survive very well in polluted waters and become polluted themselves, if I may call it like this. Basically, it's bioaccumulation, which may end up poisoning the animals that prey on them. They also spread diseases that are lethal to native crustaceans and crayfish, which negatively impact the water quality. Uh, and, uh, and they negatively impact the water quality, sorry. That's a separate issue from infecting native crayfish with lethal diseases. Because of inv invasive crustaceans like these, our native crayfish in the Netherlands have been wiped out. So how does the crabs get here in the first place? Well, the Netherlands is basically one giant waterway.
One of my favorite things to do sometimes is just sit there and watch the ships go by. As you can see, the Netherlands has a lot of commercial activity when it comes to large container ships, transporting things like coal, cars and even various industrial resources. Cruise ships, large tankers and bulk cargo carriers use a tremendous amount of ballast water, which is often taken on the coastal waters in one region after ships discharge wastewater and unload cargo and discharge at the next port of call, wherever more cargo is loaded. Ballast water discharge typically contains a variety of biological materials, including plants, animals, viruses and other microorganisms. These materials often include non-native, nuisance, exotic species that can cause extensive ecological and economical damage to aquatic ecosystems. Ballast water discharges are believed to be the leading source of invasive species in the US marine waters, thus posing public health and environmental risks, as well as significant economical costs to industries such as water and power utilities, commercial and recreational fisheries, agriculture and tourism. A recent study suggested if no action is taken on ballast water management, species invasion can propagate to any port in the world via global shipping network with an average of two intermediate stops. Tons of invasive species have been introduced through ballast water, sadly. I personally respect all life forms and I think all of them have a place on this planet. Despite that, invasive species, if allowed to go unchecked, will drive many other species extinct. That's why I decided to make a series bringing awareness to them. And some of these invasive species do have to be eradicated if we can stop them. Last but not least, I want to say that my YouTube uh, channel is not supported by YouTube. When people click on my videos, I do not make money because my YouTube channel is permanently demonetized by YouTube. However, it runs on donations for 100% and luckily I get a lot of support from my fans and followers who help me run this channel. If you are willing and able to, please consider contributing to my channel financially through Patreon, PayPal or LiberaPay. Several options are available under the description of this video. Thank you for watching. Together we will fight the good fight for the environment and spread more awareness about environmental issues. Hope to see you next time.